Hello, welcome. This is Jensen Vars. I'm going to play something unconventional. Here I have Tabletop Simulator. I have loaded my Scene Unfolding Machine and Plot Unfolding Machine Homebrews. I'm gonna play Resource RPG, a very simplistic RPG that, uh, well, it is so simple that all you have to do is define four aspects of your characters, give them a score, and then you roll that amount of dice against a challenge um, rating, and that's it. For example, I have here Tanya, she's the mission leader, has four points there. She's a trained field engineer, three points. Traps disarmer, two points. Seductive, one point. Raphael, he has alien knowledge, alien knowledge, four points. Assault shooter, three. Computers expert, two, and biologist, one. If sh something comes up that she can use, I don't know, trained field engineer, you set a difficulty, which is five, 10, 15, or 20. Let's say for easy difficulty it's 10, uh, 5, but the next one would be 10. If she has Strange Field Engineer on 3, I would roll 3d6. Um, and then I would sum it up and compare it against the value of 10, which is the difficulty I would have chosen. If it's exceeding that, it's a success. That's it. The story, I have taken this map from a game. Uh, it's a world map from Planetfall. I liked it and put it here and I found two miniatures I like so this would be Tanya and this would be Raphael that's that's it uh, they will start here somewhere in a city and they will have to do something which I don't know what exactly let's figure out what's the game about by using the scene unfolding machine um, tables so I will need an action and a subject. I will go into roll 2d100. Uh, no, that's not, these are the 100. 71 and three. So for the action, 71 is ban, pro prohibit, expel, throw out, cast out, dismiss. And three is Ability, quality, power, edge, implant, or skill. So we have to ban, prohibit, cast out, or disable a quality, a power, or edge, or implant. Um, let me see the map. What I'm coming with is that our characters are on a mission and they need to go. Let's begin here. This, whatever facility is there, and they need to disable something that's a uh, functioning uh, wrong um, something mechanical went off and needs to be disabled as an emergency let me switch the music to something that can be tolerable which is not that let's see Okay, I hope that's better. So, where does the game begin? I don't know, so that's why I'm going to use the plot unfolding machine scene designer to define the scene number one. I need to roll a d20. d20s. That's an 11. 11 stands for a location or area specific event. Something happens um, where we are. So the game's gonna start in the city. This uh, acuity. And something related to the city is happening. And we said there's going to be a failure on an outside facility. So we have to go out, right? I don't know what kind of problem is gonna happen. Uh, let me roll for an objective. That's a 26. 26 descent, dessert, hot, dry, red, sunny, or flat. Okay, so my interpretation is that the city is suffering from a very, very hot ecosystem because of a failure in one of the power nodes. So it all begins with a very strenuous, extremely deadly hot weather, and our characters are being assigned to this mission. 
they are there, they're suffering the heat. And I need some sort of event to trigger off. Let me check for a challenge designer. Challenge designer needs a skill and a factor, so it's two times d10. That is 9 and 8. 9 is evade, danger, run, escape, and 10 is needs a careful plan. So we need to evade something or, or escape or run from something during this heat event. It is hot event. I guess it's a fire. Our characters are gonna start in some sort of um, governmental, yeah, government facility and the alarm starts ringing bang bang and what did we roll so the challenge is an evade danger run or escape we have to escape this fire which has been triggered by a failure and we have been assigned to go and fix this tanya and Raphael. this is an alien planet by the way we are in some sort of sci-fi world um, so let me see um, we are escaping a fire. Mission leader is Tanya. Raphael is, has alien knowledge. Assault shooter, computer expert, trained field engineer. So Tanya is a field engineer and she must know this facility. So I'm gonna roll 3d6 to see how well she does in figuring out a way. Uh, difficulty would have been 10. This is 14. That's a success. So Tanya's leading the way, they're going across the corridors, there's desperate people out there. And Raphael would want to know if there is any alien interference in this. I think it's very unlikely. I'm gonna ask the Oracle, could, could there be any signs of alien interference that's causing this regarding of the power regardless of the power outage that's the first hypothesis is could be there anything to do with aliens i need the oracles for that two times d10 that's a two and a six two stands for no and six stands for nothing so no period Nothing to do with aliens, or at least no proof. Raphael checks out carefully. They lead the way. Something. I'm gonna roll on the GM action table of the scene unfolding machine now. Because I need to know what the GM adds to the scene. That's a d20. Is this a d20? Yes. So we got a 13. 13 stands for gives a single character a chance to shine. The question is which on 1, 2, 3 is Tanya. Yes, it's Tanya. Which, which skill can shine this time? I need a d4. Number 1. So she can shine as a mission leader. And I need a challenge design here. Uh, a challenge type a d10 to see how can she shine she can shine through a challenge that's logic research or knowledge so she needs to show off how acknowledgeable she is as a leader i'm guessing what's happening next is as we turn out the corridor there's some civilians needing help getting stuck behind a fire and tanya is leading rafael out but they need to help them it's her trying chance to shine as a maker of hard decisions. How many people are there? Um, I need to check uh, how many. Oracle, that's a d10. Seven. Seven, how many is expected amount of people? I would say between one and six. Six people need help behind a fire. And she says, Raphael, we have to help them. Now. And, um...
she will have to act right now. So I need to cooperate together. Tanya is going to use mission leader aspect and Raphael is going to use hmm, his assault shooter aspect. So we have a total of seven dice uh, for a challenging skill that needs to sum up at least 15. That's an eight for Tanya. And that's a crazy 15 by Raphael. So they work together. Tanya's taking off the fires. And Raphael's helping moving the boxes and uh, carrying the people out of the fire. Does everything go as expected? Since they succeeded, I would say it's mostly likely that yes, but I need to check. That's a 3 and a 7. 3 is no and 7 is period. Things don't go exactly as expected. Um, things get complicated despite Tanya and Raphael working fine. Uh, in order to know what happens next, I'm going to ask the scene unfolding machine next GM action. That's a d20 plus 10. That's a 27. 27 stands for alters the weather, mood, or circumstances. So I guess as, as um, Tanya and Raphael are moving people out, move, move, some of the roofs of the hallway falls down and they need to change the route. Um, they are blocked in there and they need to figure something out. I'm gonna roll the next challenge. That would be the last one for this scene. That's a five. Five is this is the wrong one. Five stands for logic, research, or knowledge. So we need some sort of knowledge expertise. I'm gonna use Raphael's computers expert um, to scan the area for a different route route. Maybe he has some tools. Let's say. Um, some radio tools that can detect heat and he's going to look for the best way. So I'm gonna roll 2d6. Difficulty is f mm, 5. That's a 4 so he doesn't find a good route and so Tanya says there's no time. We need to get out. We need to take a risk. And she's gonna use her field engineering expert to look for weak spots in the wall. That's the last chance to rescue those people. That's a 3d6 against a difficulty of 10. That's 13. That's a success. So Tanya finds a weak spot in the wall. She pushes it with, kicks it off, brings it down, and they finally find a way out. Come, 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 go! They rescue... How? I don't think they rescue everyone, unfortunately, because the roof fell and things went a bit awkward. But they did success two out of three challenges, so a d4 of people that perished in the assault. Someone, unfortunately, died. Um, I want to know who. Can you describe it? We need to forget this. Uh, remember about this person. Describe someone, it's 2d10. Oh, that's a d20. So we got a 7 and a 9. 7 stands for actively and 9 stands for rich. I guess someone rich has perished today. Maybe a noble person of the city or a, let's say a middle high-class worker of this research company. We have to go, no time. And they leave the building. That would be scene number one. As they leave the building, they need to hurry up. Many places on city are on fire. There are many emergency, um, let's say, flying cars or pods 
assisting and aiding with the fire as Raphael and Tanya need to take care of the failure. Let's go for the scene number two. They leave the people behind. They make them make sure everyone escapes alive and they send them to seek for support as they need to leave. The scene number two, I need a scene designer. I need to roll a d20. That's a 20. 20 stands for an important clue or opportunity shows up. Okay, what behind which challenge? I need a challenge type and a factor. That's a 8, 3 and 8. 3 is an athletic force, stunt or acrobatic skill. And 8 is takes certain time. Hmm. So an acrobatic skill that leads to a clue. What I'm guessing is that as they come out of the city, there is a watchtower, a very tall one. But it's been hit hard by a heat wave. And it needs some skill to get up. But if we go up, we might be able to see the area from top. Do the characters take this risk? I think it's worth a risk, because we might have a better view of what's going on. So... Tanya is a trained field engineer, and Raphael is... Well, he's more of a biologist, so he cannot help much. So Tanya is going to lead this... Check. And they're going to try to climb up this watchtower. I'm going to ask some questions first. Um, is there anyone in the feet of the watchtower down there? I mean, I mean what's, what's the situation look like? Do we see anyone? Four and two. No at first so there's no one at front first but then we realize there's some guards hiding do they see the guards hiding um, i guess rafael can help with assault shooter difficulty 10. that's a six so they don't see someone hiding and they approach the tower they miss some guards that are hiding trying not to be seen, they are cowards. Um, do they eventually see the guards as they start to prepare to climb up the tower? I guess it's unlikely because we failed the first spot. That's six and nine. Six unlikely stands for a no and nine is unless. So I guess unless we start climbing up we won't see them. Tanya starts climbing up with her equipment and we start climbing up the watchtower and I want to have a GM action here from the scene unfolding machine. GM action, it's a d20. That's a 4. 4 stands for GM remains silent, what the characters do. So I guess the GM doesn't say anything do and we manage to climb the watchtower right there's no need to make a skill what do we see up there i want an oracle question or what that's a four and two four stands for wrong and two is danger there's the wrong kind of danger What's a wrong kind of danger? I don't know. Uh, what kind of danger would we expect? I guess fire and something. The tower coming down. The wrong time. Is it aliens? A flying monster or some sort? It's unlikely. 10 and 2. 
10 stands for yes, and 2 stands for at first. Yes, it, it looks like an alien at first. But as it gets closer, it's not only an alien. The characters might spot and recognize there is something strange about this alien. Let's see, alien knowledge. Raphael, what's that? What kind of flying monster is coming? Uh, difficulty 10. So Raphael would be able to tell. Is this some sort of... Technological, like a like, yes, upgraded alien. Zero and ten stands for no ten and ten. It's a yes, obviously. It's obviously a technological, advanced or mutated creature. What is that thing doing? Um, is it attacking? Four and one. No. Possibly. No, it doesn't look like it's gonna attack. Doesn't look like, but we're not sure. So the thing is scouting around. We're up there in the tower. There is a flying alien that's technological. Uh, does it belong to our faction or is it really alien? Does it belong to a laboratory or something? Seven. That's a seven and a one. Seven is don't know. One is possibly. So we don't know if it's an alien from our city or one of our laboratories. We cannot tell. Uh, but it, it may be. I want to know Raphael if he can do a computer's expert test, that's a very difficult one. Difficulty 10. To scan it. He doesn't... The, the, yeah, it's not possible to know what's this alien. Raphael, there's no time. Help me look. And Tanya's looking at the surroundings. What do we learn? Because the scene designer said there would be a clue on this tower. What do we learn? 2d10, 4 and 5. We learn that there is the wrong kind of environment. Of course, it's all heat and, and it's burning. I guess the wrong type of environment, I think we are losing some of the terraforming capabilities on the region. That's what we learn. Hmm. What do you think, Raphael, is could be happening? Um, we look at the power station from far away. Can it be seen from here? That's a two and a three. Two stands for no and three stands for but. No, but. It cannot be seen, but there is some sort of smoke coming up from that area. Is it a smoke? Six and four. Six stands for hard to say. Hard to say if it's a smoke or if it's something else. It could be fog. We cannot know that. Damn it. Okay, let's let's start going, I guess. So we end the scene number two there. They climb down. I guess it's very likely that's easy to climb down with the time. Let me check if it's easy to climb down before we end the scene. That's a one and a four. I think that's unfortunately a no. No, it's not easy. So we have to make a test. Take your time. Don't hurry up. There's no reason to hurry up. It should be an easy test. So I'm gonna use train field engineer to climb down with difficulty five. Nothing should go wrong. And nothing goes wrong. So they can climb down some pieces of the tower fall down and when we when they come down, do they finally see this coward, cowardly guards? I guess it's unlikely. But let's check. I want to talk with them. That's a five and a seven for unlikely. No. Period. No. 
we don't see them. Okay, let's move on. It's cowards. Is the next scene already in the power station? I want only no caveat, only one. That's a tree. Is the next scene on the power station? No. So we're going to have a next random encounter along the way. Um, what goes on? What kind of scene do we have? I guess I need a d20. Oops, come here. That's an 11. Scene designer 11 stands for location or area specific event. I don't know what kind of things can happen in this area. We are on the outskirts. I have no idea. So I will need some inspiration. Inspiration from the scene and folding machine D100 tables. Um, a subject and an adjective, that's what I'm going to roll, 2d hundreds. Uh, that's a 14 and a 22. So the subject is 14, an arrival of someone, people, newcomers, immigrants. And 22 as an adjective is dark, lack of light, obscure, hidden. There's people arriving. There's people, immigrants arriving. Immigrants, right? What was the subject again? Arrival of someone, people, newcomers, immigrants. So there's someone coming here. I need to describe them. Describe someone to D10. That's a 20 and a 7. No, that's the wrong dice. That's a 2 and a 7. Especially safe. No, especially Innocent. Okay, innocent people are coming. Damn it. There's a map. I guess a lot of people. Do they, are, are, are they workers from the power station? Uh, where's the other D10? Is this a... Yeah. Are they workers from the power station? Three and five. No period. So they are not, they are from a different a, a town or a village or something. I need to know where exactly. Let me take the next drop that falls in this province is where they might be coming from here. So I'm gonna set a village from around here. I need a village marker. Yeah, this works, this works fine. This house represents a village. Um, can I tint it? Okay, cool. Village of fleeing people. Nice. So p people are coming from this direction. I need to know what kind of challenge will the scene have. Scene designer, please. I need a challenge type. Uh, challenge type, 2d10. I need a 2d10. That's a 3 and a 6. 3 is athletic force, stunt acrobat. And a 6 stands for need some knowledge. I guess the knowledge is the language. They speak a foreign language. But we need to do some force. I guess they're going to run towards us. Why do we need an acrobatic to deal with people? I think that doesn't make any sense, right? Um, I know. I think... Hmm... I cannot link these two things together, so I'm gonna ignore this. 
but I'm going to replace the athletic skill with some sort of strength test. I guess they are having problems. Uh, maybe with the ground, they got hit by a strong heat wave and there's mud or some sort of unstable ground. Terraforming on this region is failing, so we need to pull them, to pull them out of this horrible situation. Um, I guess they are desperate, they are screaming and they one of them comes running. Please help! What's going on? We're trying to go to the city. The heat wave is killing us. And one of our people got stuck in the lands of the unstable grounds. We need to pull them off. Please help rescue them. Alright. What can I help here? Trained field engineer, of course. I think one option Tanya is gonna think is about detonating the ground, so it's going to open a space up, and that's gonna be very risky. Raphael's going to focus on keeping the people calm down with. Uh, he doesn't have anything really to talk with people, but he's gonna try anyways. Let's focus on what Tanya does. That's difficulty 10. That's an 8, so things are going to get complicated with the explosion. Um, but Rafa will have to do this strength part uh, with Assault Shooter. Difficulty 10. That's fine for Raphael, he's pulling people apart, making space up for the explosion, helping Tanya take care of the explosives, but one of them like one of the detonations do not clear up the ground enough. People are desperate now. What does the GM do? Seen. I need GM actions. 1d20. No, this is not a d20. Here. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I am enjoying it. It's uh, pretty fast. That's a 7 for the GM action. The gym remains silent. What do the characters do? The gym is looking at us, not doing anything. Damn you, GM. The explosive goes off. But the people, can one of them, cannot be pulled off again. Raphael, we need a different plan. Take some ropes and start pulling. I'm gonna help. Uh, this is gonna be complicated. Let's see how hard it's gonna be. Oracle, how hard I need a d10. Seven, it's gonna be how hard seven is a hard chest. So 15, 15, they have to pull a 15. Raphael's going to tie a rope. They are doing explosions. And this is a 15, and they are going to start pulling. They ask help of the people and start pulling the person out. Is the person rescued conscious? That's a 3 and a 4. 3 is no, and 4 is period. No, it's not conscious. They pull him off. Uh, does he need medical attention? 7 and 2 stands for yes at first. So yes, but it's not so hard to to make sure he's fine. So Raphael, who's a biologist and a computer expert, is gonna run some basic tests. Uh, difficulty 5. That's good. Things go well. They make sure his, this person is stable and they rescue one more person out there in the danger. Before we end the scene, I want to give a chance for the GM to act. I'm gonna roll a d20 plus 10. That's a 2, plus 10 is 12. The GM describes an additional location, element, or detail. Okay, let's roll an adjective for inspiration. Mm, 
19. 19 is a corrupted, manipulated, utilized, misused, corrupted. Okay, so what we're going to notice if we pull the person out is that this was not a normal terraforming issue. There is something corrupted about this ground. Damn it, what can it be? What can it be? So Raphael is alien expert. He's gonna run, roll a check. With 46, difficulty 10. That's a 19, so Raphael accept, exceeds. He's gonna scan the area for alien proofs. Is, is anything related to aliens? Because this is corrupted and it looks strange, like black or mossy in the ground from where we pulled the person off. I need 2d10 for an oracle question. Is this related to an alien? 4 and 7, I would say likely. 4 is hard to say, 7 is period, it's hard to say, so he runs some scans, but even so, he's pretty sure he's scanning, it doesn't match any alien seen before. Alright. What could this mean? I don't know, something strange is happening in the ground, in the um, let me see if Tanya can do anything. She's a trained field engineer, traps the summit, seductive mission leader, so she needs to make the call. And she's gonna say, okay, we're gonna spend more time, clear off the people, let them go to the city, but we need to investigate this further. So they're going to set up some camp here. I need some sort of tent. Is there anything like a tent? I have no idea. But, they're going to set up camp here, and they're going to take time to figure out whether this ground spores or corrupted ground is related to aliens or not, before they take any further risk with the going directly to the power station. So I'm gonna stop this session here, I enjoyed it, I hope you liked it too. Um, to explain a bit more what I did is play with my two of my homebrews actually the first one is the plot unfolding machine which includes what i used for the scene designer to come up with scene ideas and challenge types oh i forgot to use the scene complication that could have helped and the second homebrew is mine as well scene unfolding machine it helped me with gm actions what the gm does uh, with NPC stuff, which we haven't used, and then the inspiration prompts, which we did use. So, this is Jensen Vars. I hope you like this idea of the game. I enjoyed it, and uh, let's see if the next scene, what do Raphael and Tanya learn about this weird corrupted grounds before going to the power station. Thank you, check out my blog, and stay in touch. Bye-bye.